Well, hello everybody and welcome to Condi Systems. I'm David Gross and we're here to help you do better, help you learn, help you make money with sublimation. And today it's my great honor to have a good friend of mine with us, Roger Wombolt. And Roger, you want to throw up it on the screen there, uh, Rodeo sure, David. Hey, Roger, can you hear me? I can, yes. So Roger is with us from Ottawa today and uh, he's our good friend at, at Corel. Roger, how many years have you uh, been with uh, Corel? Um, this past August it was 26 years. Wow, wow. So we're now seeing your screen. Uh, you're right. sharing it and um, so we're gonna we'll, we'll jump right into it. So Roger is my go-to person to understand Corel. Uh, especially Corel Draw, um, and uh, he just is amazing. In fact, um, I asked him to help uh, one of uh, Condi clients with uh, reinstall issues today, and he cleared it up in minutes, and um, thank you for doing that. Roger, we'll let you just go ahead and jump right in and uh, help us understand um, how we can benefit from Corel Draw. All right, thanks very much, David. I'm going to uh, just stop my video. And let's just uh, jump right in. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here to be able to present uh, to you. What I'm going to be taking a look at is the new features that we've added to CorelDRAW 2021. And I'll talk a little bit about the latest release of CorelDRAW 2021.5. And this took place last Tuesday. So I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, first of all, what's included in the application? Of course, we have Corel Draw, which is the vector manipulation application. There is, uh, I'm going to jump down one. There is Photo Paint 2021, which is raster manipulation, Corel Power Trace, Corel Capture, and of course, Corel Font Manager. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at the Corel Draw new features, as I've mentioned. We're also going to be looking at the Font Manager in a little bit more detail. And uh, time permitting, I may cover off a little bit of Corel Capture. Uh, the one application I haven't mentioned here is the Corel Draw dot app. Now, what that is is it allows the user to upload content to the cloud. You can download from the cloud as well, and it gives you a way to save your files so that customers online can actually take a look at those talk a little bit more about that when we talk about 21.5 as well. So starting off with the interface, and I'll cover a few basic things about the application as well as, as I say, new features. It, across the top, we have a standard drop-down menu. So things like file, edit, view, layout, and that sort of thing. Directly below that is the standard toolbar. Now on the standard toolbar, there's things such as the new document, open, save, save to cloud, down, um, sorry, save the cloud, open from the cloud, as well as print and other icons here as well. Below that is the interactive property bar. We also call it the context sensitive property bar in that when I select a tool in the toolbox, my property bar is going to change and it's going to give me additional features and functionality uh, for that particular tool. With the toolbox itself, down the left-hand side, any icon that has a triangle in the bottom right-hand corner, that's an indication that there's additional tools buried below that. Down the bottom, we have page navigation. So I can go back a page, I can go forward a page, I can go to the beginning, or I can select a particular page tab and go to that particular page. Below that is the status bar. And the status bar will tell me what I currently have selected. It gives me properties on that, such as what the fill is, what the outline is, and that sort of thing. 
In between the page navigation and the status bar, we have the document color palette. Now, the importance of the document color palette is that any file or any object that I create within the document and add color to it, that color will appear in this palette. If I was to click on a new document and uh, simply create a blank document, you'll notice that my document color palette is blank. If I draw an object on here and I go and I give it a solid fill and then I change the outline, these colors are automatically added to my document palette. The advantage to that is two things. Number one, the document palette stays with the file when I save it or send it to another user. And more importantly, is it's going to allow me to restrict the number of colors that I'm using in the file. If I'm using a specific shade of red, that will be in the document palette. If I need to use that exact same red someplace else in the document, I can grab it from the document palette rather than looking in the color palette on the right hand side. Talking about the right hand side, this is the default color palette. And what I mean by default color palette, when I create a brand new document, in the new document dialog, we have primary color mode. So that will dictate what this color palette is going to be on the right hand side. And of course, you know, for sublimation, we want to make sure that we're using the RGB color palette. If I select RGB, click OK, my new document will have the RGB palette on the left hand side. I'll close this off and go back to our document here. Just to the left of the color palettes, we have dockers. And I'm just going to close off this docker. I shouldn't have had that open. Uh, by default, we have the hints docker, the properties docker, and the objects docker. The objects docker is basically where you can see all of the content that's in the file. If I select an element on the screen, whether it be text or something in here, it will highlight it in the uh, objects docker. And I have a number of different features in here that we'll talk about a little bit later on. I'm sorry. Okay, I apologize. I was commenting that on the on the the Corel palette for RGB. I do have that as a download, so they can download it from our support area and print out the RG, the default RGB palette. Absolutely, and I can show you how to print out that palette as well. It's a great to just remind me, David, to talk about scripts and whatnot. <clears throat> okay, uh, thanks for that, David. So your your uh, Docker's are available through here. Are, are, are appear here, they're accessible from the Windows menu down to Dockers, and you can select whichever Docker you want. Now you can also click the plus, which is the quick customize, and I can access any Docker in here and just simply click on it and it will turn that Docker on for me. So let me just close off that Docker that I just opened up. So that's basically the interface. Next, we have the welcome book. To access that, I'm going to click on this icon up here. If for some reason that's closed down, I can go to my help menu and down to welcome screen, and it will open up the welcome book for me. In here, I can see recent files that I've uh, been working with. Now I reset my defaults before starting this session. That's why you're only seeing the one file listed here. Down here, I call this give it a try. This gives me the ability to click on one of these and it'll walk me through some of the tools and some of the features within the application to help me learn a little bit. Next, we have workspace. And there's a number of default workspaces in Corel Draw, depending on the type of work that you're doing. For example, if you have a tablet, maybe you're using something like the, the Surface where you don't necessarily have the keyboard attached to it. Everything is on screen. You'll notice that the tools are much larger. You'll also notice that we're missing the drop down menus from up here. That's because we've moved them to the bottom. So left clicking down here, I can then go into more and I have all of my menus located down here out of the way. We do also have some of the more common features that you would use well in tablet mode. For those switching from Adobe Illustrator to Corel Draw, for example, we also have an Adobe Illustrator workspace that makes it easy to make that transition to learn Corel Draw. I'm just going to go back to my default workspace. And then we're going to click on what's new. 
what's new gives me uh, video clips and information about what new features we've added to the application. Um, there's other training stuff in here as well. This, for example, is a tutorial that I did. It's a 90 minute uh, walk through the application that has been getting some really good uh, traction on YouTube. I think we're in excess of 105,000. It's only been up there since uh, April or May. Um, but that'll take you right through Corel Draw as well. Also on the learning tab, there's a number of things in here, how to customize the workspace using templates, creating a logo, a number of different things. And of course, very important is the Discovery Center. Now the Discovery Center is where you can access content. Uh, and I've just opened on my other screen, I'll bring it over here. In here, I can access content, for example, tutorials, if I go to graphics tutorials, here we have the ability to see what's new in 2021. There's a number of tutorials in here. One of the nice things about these tutorials is uh, the tutorial actually has a video portion to it as well as written as well. So whether you prefer to learn by reading or watching the video, that's available for you. Let's move that back out of the way. The uh, final tab in here is called the store. And this is where you can purchase content uh, that we have available. I do have a promo code for all of those on this uh, in this session that will give you uh, discounts on the, the scripts and the um, um, clip art that we have in here. If you want to take a look at the clip art, it's a matter of selecting vectors and we filter it down so you can see all the different clip art that's available. Here's an icon bundle, for example, um, it, you know, 8,700 vector icons. It's simply a matter of clicking on buy now. Very easy to get all this stuff. If you're looking for the content that is free, simply click on free and you have all this content. So this, these are the fonts that ship with the product. Uh, fills, bundles, uh, you know, a bitmap fills, uh, texture fills, there's uh, the clip art. And it's simply a matter of selecting it, click on download and install. And it really is that simple. You can see it's fairly quick. Uh, in here, I can also take a look and, and see what these different fills are and whatnot. I'm going to, uh, oh, the one final thing is a subscriber webinar. Now, I mentioned to you, we came out with a service pack uh, just last week. That was uh, CorelDraw 21.5. If you want to find more about that, we actually have a webinar coming up on the uh, 12th of October that you can actually register for, and that's free of charge. It gives you all the information of what this 21.5 is, but I'll talk a little bit about it in this session. Uh, was there a question there, David? Okay, no problem. Let's go back to our file here. Next from the welcome book, we have new document. The reason I have this in here is I want to show you a new feature that we've added in 2021, and that is this icon right here. This is the pages icon. So it allows you to access the multi-page view, and that can be seen through the pages docker. Other things in here to note is there are a number of different presets. So I can use the default RGB. Uh, if I'm doing something for the web, then I can access web. And when I do that, it sets my uh, unit of measure to pixels. It also sets my rendering resolution to 96 DPI. Now, just a little bit about the, the uh, rendering resolution. This is the resolution that items get rendered out at. So for example, drop shadows and lenses, this is the, the resolution they'll be at. If you're using something like RGB, your resolution is 300 dpi. You really don't need lenses and drop shadows that high. So you can drop that down and that will help speed up the printing. Uh, templates, fairly simple and straightforward. I can go file, new from template. And I'm sure you've all seen these before. Uh, there's a number of different templates we have in here. You can also create your own template. Uh, I did this one just uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, for one of the girls in the office here. So um, this is the Condi uh, P500 template for the, the baby bib. Uh, you're doing that, maybe you're doing the latte mug. So you can create your template. And what I recommend is if you are using Condi templates, of course you should be, most of them are CDR formats. Bring it in, do your design, and then save it in CorelDRAW as a CorelDRAW template by going File, Save as Template. And what this will do is it will put it in the application for you, puts it in the proper folder, and so that if you want to use that template again, you've already designed it once, it's going to save you a lot of time uh, having to re reinvent the wheel sort of thing. So you can use the templates uh, right away. 
Now, Pages Docker. So this is one of the new features. I'm going to go to my Windows menu, down to Dockers, and then Pages. This allows me to, I can click and drag and change the order of my various pages in here. I can also select multi-page view. I'm going to use my scroll wheel to zoom out a bit. And here you can see my entire document in all its pages. I can set the grid over here as to how many pages across columns and spacing. Maybe I want them in single file, vertically, horizontally, or custom. And custom allows me to move these pages around and I can change the order of them. I'm going to go back to, oh, just a second, it's decided to take a pause. Well, this isn't good. <laughs> I think what I might have to do is close the application down and relaunch it. So just bear with me for a moment while I do that. Right, in the meantime, uh, do questions come in, David, or are there any questions there that I might be able to answer? Mo, uh, so far questions? We'll, we'll, um, we'll check right now, Roger. Sure. And I'll go ahead and bring that back, back up right away. So uh, let me ask you a question. For the people that are um, being bombarded with um, propaganda on Windows 11, um, will Corel run on Windows 11? Absolutely, yes. Um, so we, we've we been using Windows 11 in the in the office at, uh, on the QA side and the dev side. And so, yeah, we've been fully testing it. There's not any issues as of yet that I've been seeing. Yeah, so should... what I, my advice to people is that uh, I've been running Windows 11 and running Corel Draw 2021 as well. I would recommend that you not upgrade to Windows 11. Do not upgrade to Windows 11 until they put out their their first big Windows 11 um, uh, update. Um, it, it's, um, it's, it's not ready for prime time. Okay. All right, so we're, I, this, this document has a little bit different page order. All right, so that's basically the pages Docker. That was kind of rough. My apologies for that. Windows, Dockers, pages. And as I say, here you can um, look at it in multi-page view. One of the nice things about the multi-page view is I'm going to zoom out a bit. And if I'm looking at something here, I can actually take an object from one page and drag and drop it onto another page. So I can actually edit in this mode as well and move stuff around. I'm just going to go back to single page view. Now, another new feature that we've added is the auto fit. So here I have a design on the page. You can see my page size is 16 by nine. This particular design, if I marquee select it, you can see it's 2.8 by 3.1. I want this to the page to automatically fit to that. Let's select this icon here. I can have a little bit of a margin if I want. And I'll select auto fit. What it's done is it's automatically fit this artwork to the page. Now, just an explanation here. This is actually on a master layer. That's why you're still seeing that there. That's why it didn't move. So it's and it's locked. So that's why we're, we're basically seeing this as, as it should be. So it's actually fit that page to the proper size. If I go in back into page view, you can see I have that page here. All right, we'll go back to single page view. F4 to zoom in, and let's go on to my next page. Another new feature that we've added is the file I.O. or the multi-export. Now, the multi-export allows me to take an image, and I'm going to go into my objects docker. You'll see in my objects docker, I actually have these images named uh, by what they are. If I go to my Windows menu, down to dockers, and then down to export. This is going to open up this Docker for me. And what I can do is I can set this one to export. I'll click on this icon and I want it to export as a PNG. Now I'm going to select this one. And under here, I can select 
add with these uh, these add asset with these settings. What it's going to do is it's going to add the Alamo with the same settings as that, the PNG and that sort of thing. If I want to come in here, maybe I want a different resolution. I can come in here and I can change that as well and access, access those settings. I'm going to select these items here. And I want to add these as uh, a PDF file. And I'll click on this. So that's now adding those as PDF. If I want to, I could have a couple copies of this, maybe one as, as a, um, I can duplicate that. And I want it as a GIF image. Once I've done all the settings, I can take all of these items, I'll click on export all, and it's automatically going to export those to a folder that I've already selected. So it takes a few seconds for it to do it. We're creating what, one, two, three, four, five, five files. If I go into that folder now, and I'm just going to open that up and I'll drag it over. So here's the folder that I've just uh, uh, exported those items to, and you can see it's exported them as the uh, the PNGs, the, the GIF, and the PDF files. So very quick and very easy. If you want to do a catalog or something like that, we make it very easy to export those elements. Um, I'm going to watch my time because I do want to cover font manager. It's very important. And I also want to leave uh, ample time for questions. Uh, Object Docker, I've mentioned uh, already. Object Docker allows me to see what is in the file. Um, I can see here, for example, this, uh, this design is made up of number, a number of different groups. I have the ability to turn these groups on or off. I have the ability to lock them. I also have the ability to turn the layer, uh, I hide that layer if I wanted to, or I can lock it. I can also set it to not print. So if you had, uh, maybe you had guidelines or, or te information text or instructional text on there, you might want to set that on a layer that is not set to print. We can go ahead and print your design. It won't print that text. Um, selecting fairly straightforward. Uh, I can you can see that I have an object here uh, that is ungrouped. For me to select the entire object, I would have to left click and drag and do what we call a marquee select, and that's now allowed me to select those items. Also, I can left click and drag. If I hold the Alt key down, whatever the marquee is touching will end up becoming selected. I don't have to completely encompass that, and it will select it. If this was grouped together, I'm just going to do a Control G to group that and I want to select one element within there, I can use the control key and select that. You'll notice that the selection handles or the sizing handles rather are small circles. I'm going to do an F4 to zoom back out. Another way of selecting is using the tab key. And this is great for troubleshooting. If you're printing a document and uh, somewhere along the way, one of the objects don't, don't, doesn't print, go through the document with the tab key. And let me just do this back here. Go through the document with a tab key and the last object that printed or the object before the last object that printed is probably the corrupted object. So you can cycle through the tab key. The other thing is with respect to aligning, I'm going to select these elements. T for top, B for bottom, L for left, R for right, C for center, and E for even. So you can easily take a number of objects or a group of objects and align them. For example, these rectangles down the left-hand side. I simply selected those, tap L for left align, and shift E for evenly spacing. Uh, and uh, so you can get them all nicely lined up. One final selection is the digger tool. If you watch in my objects docker, I'm going to hold the Alt key down. I'll click here. And as I click, I cycle through one object at a time. Now I'm too close to the center and I'll get that pale ellipse. Um, so it's actually digging through, selecting those objects so I can pull that out. An example where I might do that is if I have a bitmap on the screen, I have a lens over top of that to give it a tint or a cast to it. And then I need to select that lens again, or maybe I need to select a piece of, of um, uh, sorry, if I need to select that bitmap again, or if I have a piece of text underneath the lens, then I can hold the Alt key down and select that. Control C will allow me to copy. You'll note that my, my cursor turned to a little blue spinning circle. What it's doing is it's creating a temp file. I can then do a Control V. It's reading from that temp file and paste it back down in. 
I don't recommend that. I recommend you do a control D and it will duplicate that element. If I hold the control key down, I can move it across and it'll constrain it on that parallel. If I do another control D, it remembers those spacing. And that's what we refer to as a smart duplicate. So if I marquee select this, control D, and I click it and drag it down a bit, I can do another control D and it will allow me to duplicate that. Okay, I'm gonna to have to skip this slide for now. Um, I'm looking at my time and I can always go back to it. Um, uh, enveloping is fairly simple and straightforward. I'm gonna take this logo and drag and drop it on the mug. Uh, I want to create some sort of a virtual sample that I can send to my customer. It doesn't look too bad, but we can make it look a little bit more realistic. On the left-hand side, I'm going to select my uh, envelope tool and it's underneath the, the shadow tool. And a little a tip here, if I double click anywhere on this line, I can add a node. If I double click anywhere on this line, I can add a node or I can delete a node. If I wanted to match the curvature of this mug and that'll allow me to um, make it look more realistic, I want to remove these center nodes and I'll just pull this down, try and match the curvature of the mug. I'll do the same for the top. And just a, another thing, for me to get that pan tool, all I'm doing is pushing straight down on my scroll bar, scroll wheel on the mouse, and it switches back and forth from whatever tool I have selected to the pan tool. And so there we have the logo on the mug. That makes it look, I think it makes it look a little bit more realistic. You can position that wherever you want and then just send that off to the customer to give them an idea as to what that's going to look like. Another thing dealing with perspective allows me to make it look as though this is actually on the billboard. I'm just going to zoom right in. I'll grab my, from the object menu, down to perspective and then add perspective. And while I'm talking about adding perspective, one feature I'm not going to be showing today uh, that is new in 2021, and that's only because I don't feel that um, it's of use in the sublimation uh, field of design, uh, and that is the ability to draw in perspective. So if you want to draw a one, two, or three-point perspective, and that three-point perspective can, of course, be a bird's eye view or, or a worm view, you can actually draw the ISO um, shapes in these different planes uh, and that's new to 2021. But again if we grab, grab our uh, perspective tool again, object, perspective, add perspective, we can make it look as though this is right on the uh, on the board. And again it's just a matter of moving the these nodes into the corners. And I now made it look as though that's on the side. Just to, as far as that drawing in perspective, very quickly from the object with nothing selected, from the object, go down to perspective and draw in perspective. And this will allow you to create your, your uh, perspective grid and do the drawings. Okay, some text basics. Um, so, we know that there's two types of text in Corel Draw. One is artistic text. It's created by clicking on the letter A, clicking on your page, and just typing on the uh, on the screen to get your text. The advantage to artistic text is that you can reshape it, you can size it. I can put this into an envelope. I can put it into a a, a container. I can do all sorts of distortion on it and uh, do various effects with it. The other type of text is paragraph text. Paragraph text is typically for uh, word processing type stuff. Uh, think of a, a box of cereal. Kellogg's cornflakes on the front is artistic text. The ingredients, the contest rules on the back, that would typically be paragraph text. If I want to put text on a path, I'm going to right click and drag and select fit text to path. There's a red glyph here, it's kind of difficult to see. I can take that glyph and this allows me to move it around. You can see that I'm properly centered at the 12 o'clock position. If I want to put this on the bottom, because this is now a compound path, I have to select the text, 
go to my text menu and down to fit text to path. And then I can move that wherever I want to. Again, I have that red beam at the 12 position. I also have it at the, uh, the three, six and nine position. Um, so I'll put this here and now I want to flip that around, flip it this way, and then I can adjust the, uh, the distance away. And as I move this, you'll notice that I'm right there I'm at 0.25 inches away. I can come up here and I can make sure that this is the same and make that at 0.25 as well. So I know I have the proper spacing on that. In 2020, we introduced um, variable fonts. And a variable font basically allows me to um, have different sets of different characteristics within the font itself. This is a variable font. On my text toolbar, right here, I have the, access, the ability to access variable font uh, settings. This particular font has quite a number of different settings. Uh, most of them don't have nearly this many. Uh, here, for example, I can make it rounded. Let me just zoom into this a little bit more. Uh, let's go, we did, uh, we went round slab. So you can see what we're doing to the font here. I can change the weight of the font. And there's a number of different settings in here. Maybe I want in line, I wanna make that a little bit of a hollow, then I can certainly do that. So it's still editable text. If I have another string of text down here, and I want to have the same characteristics, the same property in this, it's easy enough to select this, right click and drag and copy all properties here. And it's now applied all those properties to this piece of text as well. Um, clip art, fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Uh, from the Windows menu, go down to Dockers and down to Corel connect, or connect content. Now in 2021.5, for subscription users only, we've changed the Docker, it's now called Assets. And it allows you to access the content uh, from Clipart, but it gives you a little bit more in that you can uh, manipulate symbols within, um, within your document. Now, what I mean by a symbol uh, isn't uh, an irregular shape. It's giving something the, the capabilities or the properties of a symbol. For example, if I select this element here, go to symbol and create new symbol. I'm just gonna call this Condi and I'll click okay. If I go to my windows menu down to dockers and then I locate symbols, you'll see in here, that I have the symbol called Condi. I can go anywhere else in the document and I can add this symbol. Now, if normally this symbol is gonna take up 35 kilobytes, and or sorry, if this file is gonna take up 35 kilobytes, I wanna put the symbol in my document maybe 200 times, it's still only gonna take up 35 kilobytes. And the nice thing about using it as a, uh, a symbol is I can come in here, I can edit the master, I'm going to select this, and let me just change the color of that. I'll finish editing. And now anywhere in the document that I have that symbol will automatically be updated. So it's a great way to uh, uh, use uh, items like this as a symbol. And I guess, and, and again, in the 21.5, we have a Docker specifically for that. And that's the new asset Docker. Uh, Power Clip is fairly simple and fairly straightforward. I'll just show this one, right click and drag. I want to see that type of cursor, the letter A with the arrow in it and the uh, vertical beam. I'll let the mouse button go and power clip inside. That's a quick way to do it. Typically you would go to the object and power clip inside or effects power clip inside. If I hold the control key down, I can click on my power clip container. And this gives me the ability to resize, reposition. I'm gonna come over here, I'll control click outside, and you can see that I've now modified that uh, image within the text. And of course that text is still editable. Power trace, I wanna show something very quick in power trace here. Um, I've seen a number of questions. Well, how can I create a cut line around an image? Uh, it's very easy to do. I've got this uh, this bitmap image. You can see it's a, a, a transparent a bitmap with a transparent background. It's actually an RGB 96 DPI. And I wanna create a cut line around the perimeter. Easy enough to do. I'm going to go to my menu up here. I'm gonna trace bitmap and I'll select clip art. In here, I don't really need the colors at all. So I can drop these colors right down. I'll even do one color. 
Um, drop that down to one color. If I go back to my settings tab, what's important in here is that we do not have delete original selected. I'm going to click OK to this. With this object still selected, I'm going to right click on my color. I'm going to left click on the no fill, and I've now created a cut line around the perimeter of that design. If I want a bit of a contour, maybe I'm doing a sticker, then of course I can come into my tools over here. I'll set up my contour. I want one step to the outside. I can set the corners. I want to use maybe rounded corners. And now it's simply a matter of object, break contour apart. And I want to remove the red contour and maybe take this one and make that red. Uh, or if I'm using a Roland device, of course, I want to change it to the proper color, then I can do that. One more thing with respects to uh, Power Trace. Under the uh, Trace Bitmap, I'm going to go to Outline Trace Clip Art. And for those that deal with vinyl, if you're doing a iron on vinyl and you want, uh, or, or vinyl signs, and you want your different colors to be on separate layers or separate groups, then you can certainly do that. And we want to select the option group by color. I'll select that. I'm going to go into my colors tab. And in here, you can see we have a couple of blues. I only want to use the one blue. I'm going to use my control key and select these three colors. And I'll click on merge. Now I'm going to do the same with the greens. I'll merge that and I can very easily reduce the number of colors for this design if I'm doing a vinyl printing or maybe I'm doing this on a, a t-shirt with a different iron-on uh, uh, transfer materials. I'll click OK to this and I'm done. Uh, one thing you'll notice uh, for those that do screen printing, uh, I can now select these elements. So for example, if I select the blue and hold the control key down. It's going to select the group within the group and I can change that to whatever color I want. Maybe I want to use a spot color. So I can quickly change all of these to spot colors and it makes a great time saver in uh, converting all these files ready to, uh, to uh, print for screen printing or vinyl cutting. Uh, workspace customization, very quick. I can go to my... Um, tools menu down to options and then customization. The um, things I like to do in the customization is keyboard shortcuts. And I try to keep my left hand on the keyboard, my right hand on the mouse. So I use letter W for wireframe, letter Q to quit wireframe. I use the number one and the number two to go forward page and backwards page. It makes it an awful lot easier. And it's very easy to change your keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to select wireframe here. The shortcut key I want to use, as I mentioned, is a letter W. To get out of wireframe, I want to go into enhanced view. I'm going to use the letter Q. And I'll sign that. And I'll click OK. Simple as that. I've now change my keyboard shortcuts so I can go wireframe, quit wireframe, back a page, forward a page, back a page, and that sort of thing. So group and ungroup, instead of control G, control U, I have a bit of arthritis in my thumbs. Sometimes that control U is a bit tricky. So I use the letter U, I use the letter G. It makes it a lot quicker, a lot easier. Okay, let's take a look at Font Manager. We're gonna switch gears, gonna get out of Corel Draw. So I'm going to tap my Windows key, go to Corel Font Manager. Now, one of the features that we've added in Corel Draw 2021 for the Font Manager is you now have the ability to import and export folders and collections. So what are folders and collections? Up here, we have the ability to add a folder, and these are what we call monitored folders. I'm going to select this. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to click on my Condi folder, and in here, I have a folder called Customer Fonts. I'm going to select that. It's selected that folder for me, and what it's doing right now is it's analyzing that, and these are the fonts that I have in that folder. I also have something called Collections, and let me just pull this down a bit. I can create collections. So here, for example, these are my chalk fonts. Uh, these are my engraver fonts that I've got. I have some grunge fonts. And for me to put a font in this folder, it's as simple as going to the folder that I want. I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to right click, add to collection. I'll just put that in decorative. 
if I want to create a new collection, I'm going to click this icon and I'm going to call this collection Condi. Now, if I come into this fonts folder, I kind of like this one. I'll hold my control key down. Let's grab this one and 101 puppies, right click, add to collection, add to Condi. If I now look in the Condi folder, we can see we've added those three fonts. Other things we have down here is installed, not installed, protected, and duplicate. We also have embedding rights. So if you've ever opened up a file that somebody has sent you and all the fonts have changed, that's because you don't have the rights to use that font. When you create a design, if you plan on sending it to somebody else, make sure that it's a font that is embeddable uh, or installable or convert your text to curves. Now, <clears throat> if I go back to my watched folder, this My Fonts folder actually includes, you can see I have 7,796 uh, fonts. In my actual fonts folder, Let's wait while this opens up. I only have 435 fonts installed. Now we know that the more fonts you have installed, the slower Windows gets. One of the nice things about the font manager is it allows me to use fonts that are not installed. And if I take a look in here, the yellow indicates a font that is not installed. Green indicates fonts that are installed. If I have a font that's not installed, I can simply right click on it and install it. and that will now change to green. If I want to uninstall a font, it's the exact opposite. Uninstall, I've now uninstalled this from the Windows Fonts folder, and uh, so it's not adding that weight. The other thing is if I right click and select delete, that's going to delete the font from that folder. So that's, that's the font manager in a nutshell, very quickly going through it. Now we have different technologies in here as well. Uh, I want to see only variable type fonts, for example. Uh, this folder doesn't have any. Um, I have another folder on my system that has over 44,000 fonts. I don't have that installed. I don't have that set up here as of yet. But I can look for true type fonts. I can look for type one fonts. Um, maybe I only want to see fonts that are not installed or I only want to see fonts that are installed. A nice thing about these filters is these filters are also available in Corel Draw. So in Corel Draw, if I want to add a piece of text or modify a piece of text, I'm gonna select my text. I'll hit my drop down, And in here, I have my filter. I can turn that on and off. I don't want chalk fonts. I want to look in the Condi fonts and I'm going to use this font right here. So that's a font that is not installed. I've been able to use the font, and so it's not going to bog down my Windows system and that sort of thing. So it's a great way to keep a lean machine running and still have access to all of these fonts and make use of them. In 2021.5, uh, we've added a couple of things. Number one is the Corel Draw fonts. So when you go to the welcome screen, under the store, and click on... Um, free, all of these fonts are now, now available through the font manager. And so you don't have to install the, or download the entire collection. You can only download the ones that you want to, to use. The other thing that's new is the ability to use um, a variable fonts in here. And we have this icon, when that's enabled, allows me to see the different uh, properties for that variable font. As I slide these sliders, uh, it will change the font in real time. We also provide in 2021.5 the Google fonts, so you now have access to all of those as well. Let's just check our document. I think we're basically out of time. I won't be able to cover Corel Capture today, unfortunately, but if we, uh, if I'm invited back, then maybe uh, we can cover Corel Capture, or if there's something specific that you haven't seen now that you want to take a look at, be sure to mention that, and we can set up another session with uh, uh, covering that stuff. Final slide that I have before I get into questions. I mentioned that there's a discount on the vector items. Um, so there's a 30% discount on vector items from the welcome screen, go down to store, select vectors, 
and you get a 30% discount on any of the items in here. If you select applications, uh, there's a discount for the, I don't see it here because I've got it installed already, uh, AI HDR merge. If I select my library, this shows me all the stuff that I have installed. And the reason I'm not seeing that, uh, that uh, AI HDR uh, studio is because I already have it installed, but you, you get a 30% discount on that as well. Also, if you wanted to uh, purchase Corel Draw, the perpetual license, you get a 10% off, and this is a discount code. Um, as you may be aware, I have LinkedIn training that I've created. Uh, you can scan this code in and access the training. And I think we have time now for questions, do we, David? Yeah, uh, thank you, Roger. Um, I wonder if you could, um, if you can email us um, that scan code, we'll, we'll uh, publish it with these videos in the, the video notes. Um, Absolutely, I'll, I'll send this out as a PDF, on this one page. And um, the other thing is these codes are available. This particular code is available until the 10th of October. This one, I think, is available till December 31st. Okay, thank you. But, yeah, um, I can do it. Yeah, a couple of questions real quick before Bo. Um, hey, Roger, can you hear me? Barely, yes. Let me, make, yes, I can. Go ahead. Um, does uh, Corel come with a hard copy manual? No. No, the, uh, the manual is a, a PDF that you can access uh, through the start menu. Uh, and it, it does ship with the product, but no, it does not come with a hard copy. Yeah. We, those, we haven't those, had a hard copy since yeah, those days are over. Um, question regarding uh, the Macintosh version. So mm -hmm. is the, the Macintosh version available for the, the 2021.5? Great question. Um, I believe it is. Now, I'd have to double check that, yes, no, I'm going to say it is. Um, the, well, right now, I mean, anybody who has 2021 will automatically get the update. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, to 20, 21.5. So, uh, yeah, on the Mac side, um, I take it all is good. You support the M1 Max? Yes, we do support the M1 Max. Um, the other thing with Max, there are some slight differences on the Macintosh side. Some of the keyboard shortcuts are a little bit different. Uh, customizability for the workspace and that sort of thing uh, was, was limited prior to 2021, but we now allow you to create custom keyboard shortcuts. You still cannot uh, do things like this on the Macintosh where I'm creating my own custom toolbar by dragging and dropping these on. You still can't do that on the Macintosh like you can on the PC. And by the way, to do that, Control plus Alt and then drag off whatever icon you want. That's and it'll so cool. create a custom toolbar. That is so cool. And um, so, um, and I know a lot of people look at Smart Designer and so forth. Um, so I take it all is good there, probably for the 2021 release, I'm sure. We're gonna have Craig um, on in a little bit. Um, yeah. So um, question is, is does Corel have the built-in feature to generate a QR code? Absolutely. Uh, so to create a QR code from the object menu down to insert and QR code. If you're running an older version of uh, Corel Draw, so for example, Corel Draw X8, it's going to be under the objects menu and it'll be free in here. It's, it's not going to be a sub sub menu. Okay. Uh, so there's my QR code. I simply click on properties and in here, <clears throat> I have the ability of signing a URL. I can do an email address, any number of information in here that I want uh, or plain text. And it will actually update that code. This, I created this code in, in Curl Draw using Curl Draw. That is so cool. That is so cool. And of course you can put an image on it as well. So I put the logo on top of this code. And if you were to try it right now, you'll see that that'll scan without a problem, without a problem at all. It'll take you right to my LinkedIn course. Wow. Wow. Um, so many questions go through my mind that we're gonna run out of time for. Um, what we'll try to do is send you questions and then post your answers to it. Um, and um, wow, so much. So the, um, the folks that are, are interested in Corel, if you don't own Corel, there's two ways to buy it. You can buy the subscription from Corel. You can buy the perpetual license from us. 
Um, it's, it's just the world we live in. Um, subscriptions are certainly um, a way to stay current. So as, as Corel comes out with Corel 2022, um, then, then I assume, Roger, you automatically get moved to the new version. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. So the subscription is a one year, it's a one year subscription, or you can purchase it monthly. But if you have a one year subscription, you purchase. We're in uh, in October now. Uh, when we come out with a new version, sometime around, uh, sometime in the spring, you'll automatically receive that updated version because you are a subscription. So and then for folks that that don't like the subscription model, which there's a lot of folks, including me, um, you just buy the license from us, and it's yours, and you can. You can deactivate a license on one computer and put it on the other. Um, cool. You have that that flexibility. Yeah. Um, I assume that buying a license, you buy it from Windows or you buy a license for Mac, but but the two are not the same license, right? That is correct. So if you have a license for Windows, you cannot install it on the Mac. Uh, you would have to buy a separate license for that. One more thing with respect to the subscription is when we come out with service packs or updates, usually with the subscription, we'll have new features added to it as well. Okay, so the way of the world is is subscriptions uh, for, for better, for worse, but just how things are, right? Um, Correct. Well, Roger, I wanna thank you. Um, can you go back to your camera and we'll, we'll see your face again? Um, and um, so, well, we see a little of you there. Um, but Roger, I want to thank you for your, your years and years of wisdom. Um, thank you. You're still a really young person, so you're not going to retire anytime soon, are you? Well, I no. I, I, I was asked if, if I'm going to retire, and my answer was no. I, I enjoy what I do too much. I, I really yeah. do. And so, Roger, will I'm sure this uh, winter you'll send me a picture of how you are snowed in. And um, <laughs> I remember the snow up to your window seal. Yeah, I sent one to Sprite uh, last winter, and she was just dumbfounded by it. But um, we've seen it where uh, the, the snow is over my head, absolutely. So so Roger keeps himself occupied with Corel Draw. Well, Roger, we hope to have you back soon, and uh, thank you for helping our clients grow. And this has been David Gross with uh, Roger, and um, till we meet again, thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.